So my name is Rick Nelson. I head up the pre-sales engineering team here at Nginx. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some different ideas uh, about how you can use health checks, uh, the active health checks in Nginx Plus, um, when you need to worry about uh, system resources, and specifically in, with running, when running in containers. And I assume since you're at Nginx conference, most people here know about Nginx open source. So you may be aware that Nginx open source does have a version of uh, health checks but they're passive, so Nginx open source, when it sends a request or tries to open a connection to an upstream server, if it has an error, it will notice that it can mark the servers down. What Nginx Plus brings is active health checks, where Nginx is going to be continually checking the backends to see if they're healthy. And those are very configurable. Um, it's, it's actually running synthetic transactions completely separate from any actual client traffic uh, to the backends, and you configure what your URI to hit, how often you run them, what's a proper response, uh, status code, you can regex on the body. Um, various other things, for example, if your servers have some warm-up time, so when they come back to health, they may respond to the health check, but perhaps they're warming up caches and things, and if they get slammed with load, they'll fall over again. Uh, there's a slow start feature that you can tell Nginx to ramp the load up slowly so they don't just get hammered when they first come back uh, to life. And so once a health check fails, it'll get marked as down, Nginx will stop sending any actual traffic to it, uh, but it'll keep checking, and it won't send traffic to it again until it actually is verified that the other machine is up. So for these cases today, I, I, I was thinking about, so there could be one you have, you know, running in a container, you have a service where you're very concerned about the CPU utilization. Um, or maybe it's the memory utilization. Or maybe you have some really heavy requests, and your back end can only handle so many requests at a time. So those are the three use cases I'm going to uh, talk about today. Um, when it comes to getting system stats in a Docker container, um, you'll find you can't really get them very easily from the, the container itself. We use the Docker API. So you'll find I'm using that for my, both my CPU and my memory-based memory um, uh, health checks. I'm also using the Nginx Plus status API because, and I'll go into a little more detail in a minute, when I'm looking at the um, CPU utilization, I actually need to know how many containers they are, are so I'll talk about that in a minute. So I'll be showing you a demo in a few minutes. Uh, this is the, the basic config. So I've got Nginx Plus uh, at the front end, load balancing three sets of upstreams. They're all running Nginx unit, which you've been hearing about the last couple of days. Um, the count-based health checks, and the ones limited by how many requests can be processed at a time, is running Python. The other two, my CPU and memory utilization, are running PHP. So again, they're all running in unit. For service discovery, so that Nginx Plus knows how many containers are at load balance, I'm using console which some of you, there was an earlier presentation today from Zendesk, and he was talking about console, so it's a very common uh, thing to integrate a console in Nginx, especially Nginx Plus when you're doing uh, service discovery. So for the count-based health check, I'm looking at, in this case, I'm saying I, the, the service is so heavyweight, it can only handle one request at a time. So I've come up with a solution that basically when, when, it, when it's processing a request, it becomes unhealthy. That will cause Nginx Plus to stop sending any requests to it. When it it's done, it becomes healthy again, and Nginx brings it back into the load balancing rotation. For the CPU one, I've set a threshold of 70% of the Docker host utilization for the application. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit more about the specifics of that. And again, for the memory, I'm actually limiting each container to 128 megs, and then I've told the health check, if the container is using more than 70% of that, it marks it as unhealthy. So a little more detail, so we'll actually return. So they all return um, JSON data, um, and they all return health check OK if they're successful. And if they're not, again, for the count one, it'll say it's busy. For the CPU one, it'll say it's CPU busy. And for the memory, I have it saying memory low. And the CPU and memory one will actually display the memory usage, what the threshold they were calculated on, and so forth. Um, so go, but anything that's not OK is a failure. OK is a, a success. Let's go a little more detail. So for the count-based health check, I'm using a simple sem semaphore file. So when a request is received, the application will create the file slash temp busy. The health check will look for that existence of that file. If it sees it, it marks it unhealthy. When the application finishes it, it removes the file. The health check now sees the file is not there, and it comes back to health. So it's very, very straightforward, very simple. The CPU is a little more complicated. I don't know if you've ever gone into a container run top in a Docker container, but you'll find out you're seeing the Docker host. You can run in all five containers, 
you'll see they're all say the same thing. So when I first went to do this, I actually discovered that I'd never actually looked before, and I said, oh, that's not good. But the Docker API does allow you to get that. So the container actually calls the host on the Docker API, and it can gather statistics about that container. But they're about that container's usage of the Docker host. So for each container, it says this container is using this much of the Docker hosts. So I set my threshold at 70% to say this whole application is allowed 70% of the Docker host. So I use, again, the Docker uh, API, which I have to make two calls one second apart to gather the data to get the CP utilization for the container. Um, I use the Nginx Plus status API to find how many containers they are. I divide that threshold by that number, and that tells me how much each container can have. So for example, if I have one container, that container can use 70% of the host. But if I had two containers, then each one can get 35% and so on. So as it scales, each one would be allowed a little less, uh, less CPU. For the memory, again, a little bit different. I'm actually limiting it, because Docker makes this easy, to 128 megs. Uh, uh, but I get the data, again, from this Docker status API to tell me how much memory is it using. I, again, chose 70% as my threshold. Uh, if the usage goes above 70, it marks it unhealthy. When it uh, goes below 70, it becomes healthy again. So I'm going to briefly go through the configuration here. Um, this will all be in Docker Hub after the conference. I'm not going to read through every line. And if you know Nginx, the configuration is fairly straightforward and quite minimal. So I haven't followed all the best practices. So if you ran this, some of you were sitting in the Amplify stuff. But Amplify would object to my configs and say I'm missing server names and all sorts, keep alive and all that kind of stuff. But I've kept it intentionally as few lines as possible uh, and still made it clear. So here's where I define my upstreams. Um, and I'm using the, uh, if you see the resolver console valid two seconds, that tells me to use console as my DNS and dynamically re-resolve all domain names every two seconds. So I'm ignoring the time to live and just saying two seconds. I could make it one as well, but I thought two was good enough for this. Um, and you'll see in each upstream where I have the server uh, directive with the service parameter, that again ties us into console and, and gives us SRV record support because uh, I'm using standard Docker, so it's going to map the ports, and that allows us to actually get the ports from DNS, not just the IP addresses. Um, the lower one down, this is a match block. This is for Nginx plus health checks. This tells the health check what is a valid response. So I've told it I want a 200, and I want to see the body starting with health check OK. As I showed you a couple slides ago, that tells me it's OK. So that's what it's going to look for. If it doesn't see that, it marks it unhealthy. And in the right over here, I've defined our status API, which again, I'm using um, to get the count of the number of containers. And I listen on port 8082. And anything that goes to slash status will get me the raw JSON, which is what my program is using. Anything that goes to status HTML will get us our actual uh, dashboard page, which some of you may have seen, which I'll show you in a minute. On the bottom there, oh, it's not used in this um, uh, demo. I just have it in all my configs. I have, I have enabled the upstream configuration API of Nginx Plus. Again, because I'm using DNS for service discovery, but we also have a push method where you can call using API if you want to, use to, discover, to service discovery that way. So now for my service blocks, I'm just going to go in kind of detail here. This one in the upper left is a special one I put in just for the demo. I wanted to be able to show you an unsuccessful health check. But it turns out with regular server blocks, I can never do that because as soon as it fails and goes unhealthy, Nginx won't send a request to it anymore because it's down. So I have this one just going directly to the IP and port, so I can, uh, um, on, a, on a special URL, to do that. These are the three applications. I've got my Python application lower left and my PHP on the right. You notice they're all very, very similar, and the PHP ones are virtually identical except for the upstream groups and the, um, um, the server status zone names. I do have the, the durations a bit different. I have a one second duration on the server count, uh, the request count one, because I really want to get that one quickly. I've, have two seconds on the memory and added three seconds on the um, CPU one, because that one takes a bit of time, because I have to make two requests to the API to, uh, to a second apart and then do a calculation. Now, in production, you might well lengthen these to be quite longer than that. But again, for a demo, I want things to be very quick. Um, the Python one's a little bit different, because with the Python and unit, I have one Python program that, on each listener. So I've actually, in the PHP ones, uh, you can't see it here. You'll see it in a minute. Um, I have one program for health checks and one program as the application. Here I'm using one program that, based on the, or, uh, the uh, query parameter, it knows whether to do the health check or whether to run the application. And I've also had this, you'll see this 50, um, the upstream, proxy next to upstream 503. On the count-based one, there's a use case where the request comes, and before a second expires until the health check gets called, or Nginx sends another request to it because it thinks it's healthy. 
the, I've, I've programmed the application to say if it gets another request, well, it's process it when it returns a 503, and I've told Nginx in that case to try another server. And all of the ones I forgot to mention have the, uh, this, this line here, the error page um, 502, 503. If all the upstreams are, are busy and failing health checks, I return a special page API busy. So it just tells the user, the user there's no, nothing available there. So go ahead and get on with the demo. I do want to make a disclaimer here. These have not been tested in production. They haven't been tested at scale. They're just some ideas I've been kind of playing around with. So if you want to use something like it, it'll be able to take a lot more testing than, than I put into it. So hopefully you can, people so they can see that. It's great here. So first, I make, make sure I have a um, clean environment, and I do. So I have no Docker containers here. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, again, we're using Docker Compose. I'm using Docker Compose for everything, so I'll spin up some containers. Basically, the picture I showed you a minute ago, and we should have a bunch of containers now. We do. We should be able to see them in our stat the Nginx Plus status dashboard. And if we look at our upstreams, we should see three upstreams, each with one server. So there's our count-based, our CPU-based, and our memory-based. And I'm going to scale each up to two, and we can see how the server discovery works with console. We'll see it's all automatic. I just hit return here, and we'll see in a couple of seconds they're going to magically appear over there. So it's very quick, and it's all automatic. I didn't have to do anything but basically point Nginx at it. Um, so we can look at the different health checks. If we run a uh, count-based health check, and I'm just going to port 8001 is the, is the, uh, the count-based ones, we'll see return the JSON I showed you earlier. So it said it's OK. And if we run it again, We'll see that it's getting load balanced. If you look at the two outputs, you'll see the host has changed. That tells us it went to, to the different um, to the different ones there. I'll be sure where I am here. Sorry. Yeah. So we can now make it busy. So if I run the um, oh, I'm sorry. I want to show you the CPU ones first before I go back there. So the CPU health check. You see, this one takes a while because I'm making an API request. I wait a second, make an API request, and do a calculation. But you see, it says OK. And you'll see my CPU utilization is, is minimal here because nothing's happening. Um, I can show the memory based health check as well. This one comes back a bit faster. And it tells me that I'm OK in the memory as well. So that's where I wanted to be there. Okay. So now, if we run, we want to make one busy. So I have this pr program here that I run. Um, test count of Python. That's going to begin create that semaphore file I talked about. And we'll see on the left here, we should see one of them go red pretty quickly. So by default, this does it and it waits for 10 seconds. And we'll see in 10 seconds that it's going to, uh, to come back to life. Now, I want to show I said I had that special. Um, URL so I can see these things directly. So we can hit that one. We're just passing the server name for one of those so we can do the first one there. That. Oh, what did we type wrong here? Thank you. There we go. So we see it the same. Again, in this case, it's OK. So I can actually hit it, hit it either way. Um, so I'm going to show if I'm going to, now if I make them both busy, so we'll run, run here. We'll run it again. We should see one go busy. Now the second one's going to go busy. Now if I try again, we're going to get that special page I said that basically shows that the, they're all busy. And I can also run this uh, and see that I get busy. So that's what a failed health check looks like on the count, because they're both busy. So now I'm going to move on to the, um, the CPU-based health checks. And for that, I want to start out, I'm going to actually scale it back down to 1 to kind of show you the difference of what happens as we scale up and down on this. Um, now, scaling down with Docker and Compose takes a, a few seconds longer. But we should get it down there in a second. There it goes. So for this, I want to run Docker stats so we can see the, um, the CPU utilization on, on these guys. 
Now, so right now I have this, the threshold set at 70%. If I run, and I only have one container, so that container can use up to 70% of the CPU without being, um, causing a problem. So if you run this, it should run 50 to 60% of the CPU. So we should see one of the ones there you see at the bottom here, it goes to 60%. And it's going to be fine. The health check's going to succeed. It's going to check it again every second, uh, or every actually three seconds, and realize that it never hit 70%. Now let's scale it back up to two again. So it always scales up faster than it uh, scales down. And now if we run that same program again, I'm going to run it for a little longer this time, so you guys are stuff. We're going to see it's going to go up to again 60% or so, but now it's going to fail the health check in a second. Or it should anyway. There it goes. And that's because it's over, over the 35% now that's available for one. Um, and we can go ahead and run another one uh, that does less CPU, and it's going to do what, I don't know, 15% or so, 10%, and it's going to run just fine. But we also can see a failed health check by running 808. Changing the URL a bit. And this one should come back and say CPU busy, which it does, and that's why the health check is failing. So it's letting one go through because it's using too much CPU, and the one that's using less CPU, it's letting, uh, I mean, it's blocking one and letting the other go through. And finally, we have our uh, memory base health check. Um, and for this case, you'll see the second one from the top that's limited to 128 megs, so that's how I can identify which one it is. Um, and we're going to see it's, that memory is going to shoot up pretty much almost all there, and that one's going to go unhealthy as well. And now we can see that one. What is that port 05? So we can see that one's going to come back and say memory low um, as it finishes there. But in a few seconds, it's going to it's finish now, so it should go green in a second. And if we hit that again, we'd see that it's going to say memory OK. So that's it for the demo. I hope that was interesting. I'm going to get some ideas I've been playing around with. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please let me know. If not, then have a great day. Anybody want to come up afterwards? I'll be here.